Hey guys, Sleepy Reader here um, with some comic reviews, comic thoughts, things I've been reading in the last four or five days. Uh, we got Journey into Mystery. I thought that was a really cool cover by Alan Davis. I really dug it. Um, you know, if it can look really busy, but then it's really focused on Thor and I forget the name of this uh, Venier woman that, that he's fighting. Um, but that was a really cool cover. Minutemen number three. I thought that was an intense cover. Um, I do like the design quality of these Before Watchmen, uh, Before Watchmen covers, and uh, looks particularly nice when the art when the art hits just right, which it often does. Um, Higher Earth number four. That cover I can't I can't really tell what's going on in it. Even after having read the issue, it doesn't it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It seems like someone who doesn't look like anyone inside the comic book is holding the head of someone, the helmeted head of someone else, uh, lifting it up. Hmm. Who knows? Uh, Trio. That's a pretty cool cover. In in real life, it's printed on very dull paper. I don't know though on a video whether you can tell. Uh, it's just a very dull paper compared to another comic book. And I don't think it shows off the art to best effect. The colors look duller. Um, when I saw a preview of this online, I thought this cover really popped, but it doesn't really pop on this paper. And, uh, and Trio is done on this different kind of paper. I don't think it's cheap paper. It's not glossy paper. So I'm not sure about that. Uh, then I read a whole chunk of flashes. Uh, flash number 10, 11, 12, that's a really great cover. Number 12 was a really cool cover. I thought uh, that would make a nice poster. Um, and the annual, which has a really great cover. Love how the uh, reflection, or the, you know, the mirror master is a reflection in these words of the rogues. Uh, always love the way Francis Manipool plays with words in pictures. Um, but just, yeah, and just the way all, everyone's posed and set up, it's, it's a really great, great cover. I read a whole bunch of the flashes at once because I had taken a break on the flash. Somehow I just, I stopped feeling the flash for a little while, so I, I stopped reading it. It's possible I missed issue nine. I have to go back and see. I thought I had missed issue nine, but, um... Starting to read them, it feels like I had missed an issue. So if so, that's too bad. Because I really, reading all of these in a row, I really like them a lot. Um, so I just needed a little break from The Flash, and then it, then it seemed good to me again. Uh, number 10 was an excellent issue. It has a fill-in artist, the regular artist, uh, Francis Menopole, has now become my... The flash artist in my head, so it doesn't quite seem right when another artist does the flash now. Uh, although, but but uh, but Marcus Two or Marcus Toe uh, is an excellent artist, a really good, solid superhero artist, and this was a very good issue. It was full of action, um, but all the action had an emotional content to it, um, a sense of good characterization. I learned a lot about um, about the Weather Wizard, and um, and he felt like a really rich character to me, uh, with his um, with his background in a drug cartel family. So he's not just someone who gains superpowers and is a bad guy, but he grew up as someone who's expected to take over running a a drug cartel. Um, so there, there's just all kinds of good characterization in here and nonstop action. So issue, uh, issue 10 of The Flash was excellent. Issue 11 was good. Um, there was some uh, good stuff about the rogues. Um, I learned something about Heat Wave and Captain Cold here. And one thing to remember is I don't have any kind of real background on The Flash and his rogues more than has been given in these 12 issues. Uh, and maybe I've already forgotten some stuff that came in earlier issues. 
Uh, so sometime I'd like to go back because it's all so excellent. So uh, this was more Marcus Toe artwork. Um, and it was very good. There was this cool scene. I like when the Flash uses his uh, mental side of the Speed Force to very quickly put together all kinds of evidence. Um, he is someone with a science background in the police. Sometimes he he seems a little bit dim. <laughs> uh, and there was a scene here that next coming up where he tries to get at a, a job at a bar and he doesn't do a very good job of it. And he discovers that he's been pickpocketed. Um, and just the fact that he can't pay for his $5 beer makes the bartender give him a job so he can pay it off. Um, which is kind of, I don't know, seemed kind of silly to me. Um, that kind of thing would happen all the time in old comics. The other thing is, can you really pickpocket the Flash? Can he not feel it? And in a split second, I don't know. Pickpocketing the Flash just seemed, felt wrong to me, but it gave them their setup for him getting a job. I kind of fantasized him using his Speed Force thinking to just quickly th see all the possible ways you could talk someone into giving you a job and then talk this bartender into giving him a job. It's kind of a fun concept that he would end up, his new job and his new identity would be a job at a bar that serves supervillains. <laughs> This is supposed to be a real dive, but they charge $5 for beer, too. I thought that was a bit strange. Um, although Francis Manipool is in Canada, I believe, and certainly uh, prices for everything is higher in Canada. Um, it used to be their exchange rate was, was uh, that the dollar was worth, the American dollar was worth a lot more than the Canadian dollar, but well, I don't know if that's true anymore. Anyway. Um, other than little quibbles on that, it was still a good issue. Just maybe not as action-packed as the previous issue. Um, but fun, fun to have this scene in the bar and a fun showdown, three-way showdown between The Flash and Captain Cold and Heat Wave. <clears throat> so, more good stuff. And then chapter, uh, issue 12 was excellent. Uh... And here we learn a lot more about the glider, um, and she's a really cool villain if she is character. Um, and this, you know, cool cover, Return of Francis Manipal Art, you know, it just felt right. I, I do wonder when people are writer artists, um, when they write, when, when they're doing the art, that there's a greater um, synergy between the art and the writing, a greater, um, a deeper connection and synthesis between the two. Uh, that, I definitely feel that with both, <clears throat> both this and Batwoman, where, which has, you know, decent writing and fantastic art done by the artist with a co-collaborator on the writing. That's another thought I have. I think the, uh, the artists who write and right with a collaborator seem to do better and one reason for that might be um, when you work with someone else they push you a little further if you're the artist and you're making up the script you might stop with an easy solution to things and with a collaborator you might push it a little further and push your story a little further um, anyway that's just a thought because it seems like these writers Writer artists who are working with a collaborator do a great job. Um, and I always thought from things I used to read about it that uh, that with uh, Frank Miller when he was doing Daredevil that his editor Denny O'Neill was a bit of a collaborator on that, and that may have been why those those uh, Frank Miller Daredevils were so excellent, and why, in my opinion, Frank Miller when he was maybe totally on his own without a strong editor or a strong collaborator, uh, perhaps drifted and was a little more indulgent of his weaker sides. But that's a big aside. Um, so anyway, uh, issue 12 had some excellent stuff. You know, to me, there's still a lot of mysterious things about about the rogues and about this 
character. And then we get more of an explanation of the rogues and the backstory on everything in the annual number one. Um, and the annual does a lot of this jumping around in time. Here we have a flashback to Barry Allen's youth, and then the main scene where he's where he's thinking about these things is two hours ago. Um, this whole opening section where he's just sitting around thinking, uh, I still don't get why it was in there, and it kind of distracted. Um, and then we go into a chapter that's a year and a half ago. <laughs> so I struggled with the back and forth through time. However, I did learn a lot about the rogues, and I, I now fully understand um, this big change that happened to them and, um, and how it has set up all of their relationships in the current time, uh, this sort of calamitous change um, and how all their relationships are twisted. The one thing is I don't understand, I, I missed all of them, you know, they, they went through this change and their powers became more integrated into who they are, into their physical beings. But Mirror Master seems to be trapped in a mirror world. Um, and that seemed unclear to me. Was that a, just an effect of this, of this accident or something else? Um, so, yeah, and uh, here's a scene that's five minutes ago. I really hate these five minutes ago scenes. Um, so this issue explained a lot, but was also confusing. Uh, and I don't know why people need, feel the need for all this flashing around. I can understand, like, one flashback, um, and then do the, and, and they've, They've done such great work on the other issues um, without having to resort to sort of this puzzle of, of timelines. Um, and I don't even think it all makes sense because the, the first one, the, the two hours ago, when was two hours ago? Because uh, these issues were just bam, 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 one thing after another. There was no two, you know, there was no downtime where the flash could have gone off. Uh, to somewhere really far away and just uh, just sat around thinking it doesn't it doesn't really make sense um, that particular flashback a cool thing about this issue I mean obviously Francis Manipool with his detailed art and doing the writing can't do everything so that's why they have fill in issues and to do a annual also so he didn't draw this annual but he did the breakdowns which, you know, if I understand correctly, would have shown exactly where all the panels are, where the figures in the panel are, um, you know, rough, rough indications of movement. And then each chapter was, was uh, fully penciled and inked by different artists. And, and some, you know, no, as I was saying, it, it's nicer to have Francis Manipool do everything, but this was really fun to see different artists working over Francis Manipool's layouts and breakdowns, as they call them. Um, and e each artist was good and brought a different style, yet there was still that unity of feeling because of the way the layouts were done. Um, and I think to an extent, characters were still kind of posed the way Francis Manipool would pose them. Um, so it was, it was really, I don't know, for me, that was kind of one of the fun things about comics is, is seeing different artists' styles and approaches to things. And to so see it all in one book, but well integrated, uh, was really fun. Um, I think I particularly liked uh, Diogenes Neves. It's hard to pick out favorites. Marco Takera. I don't know how to, I, how to pronounce a lot of these names. Uh, he did cool work. It was fun to see Turbine come back. Um, but, and then, so it's really only on Chapter 5, which also had really cool artwork by 
Wes Craig. Never heard of Wes Craig, um, but that was good. Hope to see more of Wes Craig. But it's only with chapter five, near the end, that we come back to where we left off at the end, uh, I guess I shouldn't show you the last page, at the end of flash number 12. Um, so it just made this issue a little rough because you almost forgot now where the present was. And it had been so headlong, bam, 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 in the last three issues, uh, I just wanted to plunge right into it. It's a really fantastic scene in the mirror, scenes in the mirror world. Love that. Um, the artists and the breakdowns were done incredibly well there. Um, you know, maybe maybe Mirror Master's been like this in the past, cause, but I just, you know, have the faintest, faintest knowledge of Mirror Master from some old comic book I've seen somewhere. Uh, so, you know, overall, I hope to see a lot more of the rogues. They've become really good characters to me. Um, I'm really interested to know more about them and their relationships with each other and um, all the cool bad guy things they can do. So there was a fantastic, exciting reveal at the end of this issue, but it that's you know going to turn the plot away to some other major issue that had been dangling before, um, and that's really cool. But I, I hope we get more of the rogues, and uh, all this stuff is not dropped. We still a lot more we need to learn about about Glider, and where Captain Cold is going. I also want to learn more about, I think there's a lot more to be done with the weather wizard. Another thing in the timing of kinds of things, way back in the weather wizard issue, we have the, um, the death of his brother, which sets up a lot for him, but that happens two years ago. But then, so here, this is just me being picky fanboy saying, what are these timelines don't completely make sense. But then we have um, stories about the rogues that happened a year and a half ago. But if I understand correctly, after his brother was killed, he moved back to his uh, native Latin American country uh, to run his cartel. Um, so he wouldn't still be this kind of slacker supervillain and that's one of the great things about the rogues in their earlier incarnation. They're definitely like these slacker, almost juvenile villains who have this gang and a little code. And, um, but then they're all in conflict with each other. And it, it definitely, you know, it hits the right psychological point of what these supervillains probably would be like and why, how they ended up supervillains. And then when they... You can see, imagine them when they get transformed. Um, that further commits them to being supervillains, and they don't grow out of it, or or whatever, you know. Anyhow, uh, so I'm complaining and yet being reminded of great stuff. But all this playing playing with flashbacks is dangerous for these for these writers because they've got to keep track of it too. If they're making us do a lot of work to keep track of everything, um, and since I read four issues in a row. I noticed that two years versus year and a half difference uh, not seeming to make so much sense. So anyway, you can tell I had a lot of fun reading The Flash. Wow, I just talked about it for a huge amount of time. I tell you what, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back and do another video because I'm worried about getting interrupted by my daughter waking up where I cover these other issues. So uh, I'll be talking to you soon.